right. Hello, hello. What's going on, guys? Bert Ferguson, Realtor, coming to you guys with another video, man. And um, I really liked uh, coming to you guys last week with just a little bit more intimate, like real life realtor um, experiences that I've been through. I think those are super useful. You know, I, I spend a lot of time giving you guys data, giving you guys a lot of things about our market. But you know, if you're working with a realtor, you should get to know them and like what they're about and what they've been through, right? And why as a person, because you're a person too, even if you're looking at a property, looking for a property to like buy or sell it, you should, you know, it's good to know what you, what, what an agent has been through. And even if you're watching this and thinking about getting into real estate, um, being able to know what it takes, right? Or what have you been through or just experiences, experiences and stories are what connect people. So, I wanted to like piggyback a little bit off of last week's story, right? Where I go over my first showing and how crazy it was. Um, and it just got me thinking back to that time in 2016. And at that time, in the, like I mentioned in the video, I was working full time. I was a full time employee working in a warehouse overnight, pretty much. And a lot of people ask me who first get into the business, who have a W-2 regular nine to five job, how do you go from that to being able to sustain yourself like as a realtor, which is more of an entrepreneur? Um, you are, you know, a W-9 employee where you are like a, uh, a contractor, basically, right? You're, you're seen as a service contractor and it's a completely different ball game. You are not given any hours or anything like that. You have to figure it out. A lot of a lot of the times your office will help you, but eventually you need to figure out what works for you and your business. And it's completely different. Um, so I was going to give you guys some tidbits on how I went from that to here. Um, I've been doing real estate for eight years now. And when I first started working, the first things first is I was working overnight. So that means I had to really dial in on my time outside of work. What do my days look like outside of work? And this is the same thing you need to do um, or anybody watching this. If you have an agent who is part time and you're looking to buy a house, your agent needs to have set hours outside of their nine to five that they only do real estate work and can dial in for you. Um, so what I did was when I got off of work at about 6 a.m., I slept from about six to nine thirty, and from about nine thirty to one or two o'clock, it was all real estate work. So calls, working on my marketing, working on uh, market data, um, working on any um, appointments I'm going to set, things like that. I'm just going and working straight real estate stuff, and then from about three to five, six, I would sleep, and if I had an appointment, I would do it after six on the way to work at eight. Okay, and I did that for about a year. And that's going to lead me to my next thing. Set a time frame when you're going to leave your job. I mean, and work backwards from it. You should really say to yourself, I've got my real estate license now. I am not going to be doing this job anymore. You cannot serve two masters. You, you need to decide what you're going to do. And you need to give yourself a time frame and say, I'm out. And for me personally, I got fired. So it's kind of funny how that works. You can set like a time and you can set a time frame for yourself and God or the universe or whatever you believe in will will hear you because I wasn't going to leave on my own, man. I was so used to making that every two week paycheck and just have my life in that cycle. My the payments that I had, even though I was living at home and I had a, a not good car, you know, the things that I was doing on a weekly or monthly basis certainly re revolved around that every two week check. And to break from that cycle, I needed a higher power and I and I got fired and I got fired. I'll tell that story another time, but I did get fired from my job um, and now I had to figure it out from there. I really had to dial in and I, and I did. You figure it out very quickly when your money is funny. So um, figure out what you're going to do outside of your work time. And then after that, you also need to set times that uh, you need to set a time frame. The next thing you should have, which I did not, uh, was is funds, right? Like a year of funds to cover your expenses. Definitely, definitely have that. I did not. So I actually ended up getting other jobs. I drove Uber. I delivered pizza. Um, I worked at a bank. Um, I had a bunch of different jobs that I did while trying to make real estate work, but I knew real estate was what I wanted to do. I knew there were other agents out there who didn't have like what I have and were having success. So I knew I could do it. So there's that, right? And I would say the last thing is keep good, positive content in front of you. Your why, why are you doing this? Keep um, 
If you are spiritual or you're a person who listens to church, keep church sermons in front of you. Keep positive videos, positive audio, and positive books in front of you because there's going to be some dark, dark days, right? Where you don't know why this client ghosted you. You don't know why this deal fell apart when you did everything that you should have. There's going to be days where you just don't know why things are happening. Why is everyone in my family not on board with my dream? The things are So many things are just going to happen that you need to keep a higher thing in front of you so i like tony robbins i like bob proctor um i really love bob proctor he really like helped me get from a to b with my mindset and um he's passed now but he so he's got like older content but i'm telling you that stuff is it it's um invaluable so anyway that was my little quick video kind of diving a little bit deeper how i went from one showing a month <laughs> to and, and just things going slow to where I'm at now. That's just a tidbit, right? Get your schedule outside of your work. Um, pick a time frame when you're going to get out of your job. Um, have some some funds set apart, and uh, keep God in front of you, and continue to pray and keep good content in front of you, so that you know exactly what you're working for. All right, guys. So good luck out there. If you're a new agent, if you're watch, watching this, follow those four things. And if you have any other insights, man, let me know. And if you're a buyer or a seller watching this, you know, these are the things that your agent should have, right, to keep you first. If they're working another job, make sure that they have some of these things in place so you know, hey, this person is working for me. All right. Check you guys later. See ya.